afternoon, I'm Rachel Cowan with the Mersey News Live Roundup. New figures have revealed instances of domestic abuse across Merseyside have risen by nearly 800% in the last decade. Police have admitted they must change tactics to stop the upward trend. Lucy Burns has more. It used to be a crime that took place behind closed doors and as often as not stayed there unreported. But now domestic abuse covers more than just physical violence. In the past 12 years, cases of domestic abuse have risen by 791% and part of the increase may be due to more victims coming forward as the force steps up its safeguarding role. In terms of I think the police are better at recording offences, I think they are taking um, reports of domestic abuse more seriously. Um, there is a better reclassification as you say in terms of um, better distinguishing around the different types of crime and so taking them more seriously. Um, I also think though there is um, likely to be an increase in people coming forward. Um, you know, I think we're still not there yet, particularly with something like domestic abuse which can be an incredibly difficult crime for victims to come forward to, to ask for help because of the nature of that coercive control. But I think what we are seeing is more people coming forward now because they have more confidence that actually we do recognise it as a crime and there is going to be um, support available for them. So it's probably a, a combination of all of that, I think, in terms of why we're seeing such a big rise. Merseyside's Deputy Chief Constable, Ian Critchley, stresses the importance of victims seeking help. Yes, you know, we need, there is a challenge uh, there, but I must give confidence to victims that please ring us, please contact us, don't suffer in silence, there will be an immediate emergency response when, when, we are, when we are needed. What the prevention campaign is doing is, of course, is to try and stop us being reactive at the top end where harm has already occurred, to try and spot the signs right at the beginning. Uh, so working with young people, with children uh, around it, working with families, working with other services to seek to make sure that that environment, that family environment, is as safe as possible. And as we reach the midst of the World Cup, there are growing concerns. According to Women's Aid, Increased drinking and high levels of emotion associated with matches can cause existing domestic abuse to become more frequent and more severe. Their He's Coming Home campaign highlights this problem. According to them, one issue is public attitude. The chief executive of Women's Aid says, to help end domestic abuse, we must also tackle sexism and misogyny and safely challenge attitudes and comments where we can. On this front, football can have a very powerful and positive role to play. Lucy Burns, Mersey News Live. The family of a four-year-old girl critically ill with strep A is urging parents to check their children for symptoms, which include a sore throat and flushed cheeks. Camilla Burns' father says she is on a ventilator in Liverpool's Elder Hay Hos Children's Hospital after falling ill on Monday. Now the government is considering giving antibiotics to pupils at primary school affected by strep A. The blanket prevention me measure is being described as rare by health officials. It comes as the ninth child to die from the condition has been named as five-year-old Stella Lily McCorkindale from Belfast. A Liverpool property expert says that tackling mould and damp is the responsibility of both tenants and landlords. It's been two weeks since the, since the two-year-old Awab Ishak died of, of a respiratory condition caused by mould in his home in Rochdale. You know, the general you know, the general challenge around energy uh, is something that I think, in the spirit of global warming and everything else, we have to try. It, to actually become more efficient in the use of energy. And that's of course in how we go about heating our homes, putting lighting on. We need to switch lights off and we all have taken for granted, you know, just press that button and everything comes on and then we tend to not press the button and everything goes off as much as we should. In another blow to Christmas travel plans in the region, union bosses have confirmed a further round of rail strikes. Members of the UK's biggest rail union will walk out from 6pm on the 24th of December until the 27th of December, as the row over pay and conditions escalates. The latest walkout follows, the, follows last week's confirmation that the strikes in the run-up to Christmas will be going ahead.
there was hardly any trains on so it was really overcrowded so and I'm pregnant with two little girls so it was a bit chaotic and quite scary actually. The strike itself, is, I mean uh, I'm a strong union man but this is going a bit too far now I think. Uh, it's really upsetting the public. So next week I had a school reunion and now uh, there's a train strike on that day so I can't, can't go anymore. There are only eight days in December where the public won't be affected by strike actions. Ambulance workers will strike from the 21st of December to the 28th. Nurses are also walking out on the 15th and 20th of December alongside Royal Mail staff who are also striking for four days this month. And workers from the Liverpool branch of Shelter, the homeless charity, are begin beginning an unprecedented fortnight of strike action over pay. The Unite Union says a 3% increase is not enough and could leave their, their own staff on the streets. Tim Gutteridge from Shelter told Mersey News Live that the charity was doing all it could to navigate what he described as challenging economic times. Hollywood, Hollywood star Rob McElhenney has pledged to double the donations to a Wrexham food bank made by, the, by, made, made by a local hotel owner, Wayne Jones. McElhenney has, deemed, has been deemed an absolute hero by Mr Jones and has been praised by the members of the community. The star said in a tweet that he will double whatever the hotelier puts in the pot. Mr Jones said he'll donate his week's profit from December the 19th to Christmas Eve. Liverpool's annual Santa Dash raised, raised funds for Alder Hayes Hospital's new neonatal building this weekend. Famous faces like Big Brother's Craig Phillips, Miss England and Miss Liverpool's city region waved off the runners from the starting line. Connie Harper. Three, two, one. Over 5,000 Santas dressed in red and blue have crowded under the live bears to take part in the 19th annual 5K Santa Dash. Uh, excited. I'm glad to be doing it with my friend Dave. It's his first time, so first ever event as well. Uh, looking forward to it. Should be good fun. Quite entertaining, good. I like the music. I'm excited. Just don't want to break my ankle again. Jess England has made an appearance to start off the run, but she is no stranger to a 5K. I'm really excited. What a lot of people don't realise is as part of my charity efforts in becoming Miss England, I ran 5K 148 times in fancy dress. So it's nice to not be the only person in fancy dress today. Eight month old Frankie, a patient at Alderday Hospital, and his family will be starting the run. The official charity of the event is Alderhey Children's Charity and they are raising funds towards the specialist hospital's new £3 million neonatal unit, which will be the first of its kind in the UK. Four-legged Santas were also seen amongst the crowd. The festive runners have already raised over £6,500 for charity and Alderhey have now shared after the event that over £11,000 was raised in total. Connie Harpen, Mersey News Live. And for the weather, it's a dry but cold day in Liverpool today, with temperatures averaging around 5 degrees Celsius. Sunny spells are expected this afternoon. That's all from us. For more on these stories, go to merseynewslive.co.uk. Have a nice afternoon.